Alright, so Javon Hargrave is a member of the San Francisco 49ers, which is a, a blockbuster move. I mean, Hargrave obviously uh, has been one of the better interior defensive linemen, and we're going to get into film in just a second where I will talk more about uh, what exactly makes him so good. But it feels like a pretty good move for the 49ers. So the contract itself, it's a four-year, $48 million deal. So a lot of money there, right? Which I think he's, you know, if you want to pay the interior defensive lineman that kind of money, he's the guy to do it. I think that he's, you know, that's what he would probably get on the open market. And uh, what's interesting about it is only $40 million of it is guaranteed. So it seems like really it's about two years are going to be mostly guaranteed. So if he does fall off a cliff, because he's not the youngest guy in the world, then you're not necessarily screwed if it happens. And I think that's kind of why I think I really like this move for San Francisco. It feels a bit more, feels like there's a contingency plan. The first thing you have to think about with this is, okay, if Javon Hargrave is lined up right next to Nick Bosa, that's tough to block. That's not an easy situation to deal with. He is, again, so good. And it's interesting with San Francisco, who this is kind of the luxury you get to being a team like San Francisco, who doesn't have to pay big money for a quarterback. They have, uh, you know, now both their quarterbacks are on rookie deals with Garoppolo being a free agent. So you're in a situation where you certainly can afford to spend elsewhere and give someone like Hargrave some, a big, you know, big contract. And even though they already have kind of a loaded roster, they can go out and add another star and that's really why uh, I think it make, that's what makes it so interesting this team and for a team that already was many people thought uh Super Bowl favorites or at least uh NFC favorites I probably should say or at least NFC contenders we'll say that I'm not sure if they're favorites but NFC contenders the fact that they go out and get a star player uh it, you know that can play with uh, Eric Armstead that can play with Nick Bosa I mean this is a loaded defensive line and he should just really, I think, help a lot with them. Now, they're going to have to finagle the cap a little bit. They currently only have $3.7 in cap space. Remember, the average team spends about $10 million over the salary cap. So they're going to have to probably restructure a contract or two to make it work. But, you know, you can do that. That's not that difficult to pull off uh, and to get a star player like Hargrave for a really good, you know, in a really good situation. Uh, I'm a big fan of this move. Let's now shift to, we're going to talk about some stats and some film, talk about just what I like about Hargrave so much. So yeah, let's get into it. First, let's look over here. This is going to be the, you know, thing PFF put together for Javon Hargrave. They gave him the third highest rank out of the eligible free agents. He was the highest non-quarterback uh, on the list, so that goes to show how much they value him. They were projecting a $18.33 million a year contract. If you look all the way over towards the right, that's his PFF grades and PFF war, uh, you know, very good numbers, right? 11th best interior defensive lineman in football in 2022. And he's had some better seasons. I know 2021 and 2022 don't look fantastic, but he had had better years prior to those years and also is a pretty consistent high snap count guy. So he plays a good amount, which is important uh, as an interior lineman. But to be honest, I think this doesn't even do him justice. I think that the tape really shows how talented he is. Like, let's go over to this play. Let's talk about what's going to happen is he's going up one on one against the center. And you know what? Guys like this just make things so difficult when you have a you know, an interior defensive lineman who can just consistently beat centers. It basically means you can't put yourself in a situation. But what are you supposed to do? Fill Philadelphia is showing blitz. You have to you know, ha have your center one-on-one -on -one block someone, and Hargrave's the closest guy. Watch how one display begins. You see that right off the bat, really, Hargrave is going to use his strength more than anything. That's going to be something you see as a trend. It's just how strong he is. Watch him kind of push himself towards the left side of the screen. Look, as you see, he is able to get through, and he's going to you know, cause Mills to have to scramble out, eventually brings Mills down. So he creates the pressure and then gets a cleanup sack on top of it. Really good play from Javon Hargrave. And these are the kind of things he does consistently and why he you know, is such an important piece of any defense that he's on. Like going over here, this is going to be another one where it's going to be, again, not, not this time it's not a center he's going up against, it's a guard, but it still just goes to show how much, how badly he can just you know win these matchups. Watch as you see, he's just going to overpower the guard right there. Guard's never able to get the hand placement he wants because he got pushed back immediately and was playing catch up the whole time. Hargrave drives forward and is able to get a sack. When he wins, he can dominate 
in terms of his wins. It's not just that he gets pressures, but he can get these impactful pressures as well. And that's an important distinction to make is we always talk about pressures, but not all pressures are created equally. And it feels like his pressures are very impactful. One like this is another good example where uh, first I'm just going to show where he is on the field. He is going to be that guy right there, 97, of course. Um, and what the Eagles are doing here is something a little different than we saw on the last two plays. He's not just going to try, try to straight up beat a guard or a center on this one. They're going to do that, which is called a stunt or a twist, whatever you want to call it. But the basic idea is Hargrave tries to get the guard and the tackle to take on him, and then hopefully the center is not even blocking on that side of the field, and you have a, your edge rusher has a straight shot to the quarterback. But even if the center is blocking in that direction, there's still a way it can work out as it can cause some confusion. For Hargrave, though, typically on a play like this, you don't actually get a pressure. Typically, you're almost taking yourself out of the play intentionally to make it open up a lane for your edge rusher. Right when this play begins, Hargrave does a great job, right? This uh, guard completely went over to follow him. And for Hargrave, he's able to take the tackle out of the area as well. But in this spot, kind of one thing that's worth noting is he has a bit of a window. 69 for Pittsburgh, the uh, guard there, he's uh, put himself in a situation where he's not in a great spot. It almost looks like he's trying to get over and help out his center at this point, but really you can't do that. You have to stay focused on Hargrave because if you leave him for just an inch, watch what he can do to you. Look at him just be able to use his strength to you know squeeze through both of those guys and none of them were able to have enough strength to counteract uh, what, how quickly he was moving. He's able to get to the quarterback for a sack on a play that really wasn't designed for him to be able to get a sack. So definitely an impactful thing from him. Going over here, you know, his run defense isn't doesn't get the attention that his pass rush uh, does, I think, but he still is a very good run defender. And this is an example where it's going to be a handoff to the offense's right and he's the interior defensive lineman to the offense's left. So you have the left tackle moving over to block him. Bit of a tough angle block, but at the same time, the run's going to be far enough to the right side that it shouldn't matter. But watch Hargrave and watch how he really does just easily get over and he's able to help make that tackle. So again, just doing your job, right? Winning one-on-ones, that's what you want to see out of an interior defensive lineman or just you know, alignment in general. It's all a consistency thing. And for him, he is very consistent. And that's a big part of why he gets a, you know, wh why he's gotten a lot of money over his career is because of that. Also, one more. I want to talk about his hands for a second. Very good hands. That's the other aspect I haven't really mentioned much of. And this is what allows him to get his wins in a lot of ways, going up one-on-one -on -one against a left guard. And watch what he does with his hands. Look at how when his play begins, you see how he kind of pushes the guard's hands up, right? He grabbed the wrist and pushed it up to where for this guard, ideally he would want to get his, his left hand on Hargrave's sort of right side of his body. That's what he's trying to do. But since Hargrave grabbed that left hand and lifted it up, there's now really no way to stop Hargrave unless you're going to block him with your elbows or something. You're in a tough spot, and this is how Hargrave can get some wins. Watch as that's exactly what he does, and he's able to tackle Justin Fields as well. Not the easiest guy to tackle, but he made it look easy on that one. These are the kind of things Hargrave brings to the table. He's a very good interior defensive lineman. The only real knock you would have against him is his age, but he's still only 30. It's not like he's 35. So I would still expect that this would be, you know, a move that I think that they're going to get a good player for, uh, you know, for the contract. I do. But that's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.